In this video, we are going to be installing Prisma and connecting it with our GraphQL Yoga server, which is inside of our Next.js API route. If you're not already familiar with Prisma, it is a database ORM that works with TypeScript and it's really powerful. It connects with a bunch of different database types, both relational and document based, and has a version that you can run in the cloud or you can run it locally. In this tutorial, we will be using the local version and we'll be installing that just next. However, in a more advanced video as this course progresses, we'll have a look at the version in the cloud, which allows us to kind of push our schema up into the cloud and then Prisma will handle our database connections. And we'll look about all of that later in a further video and what the advantages are of doing that. Prisma is used by a variety of different companies and powers some amazing tools. It has a really nice declarative data schema format that you can use. So here we can see that we are setting a data source for our database using a provider and then giving it a URL. In this case, this is a ENV variable. Then we have this thing called a generator and we can generate a client. And in this case, we are passing a Prisma client JS provider here and then further on down we have a model and this may look familiar if you've worked with GraphQL before we are defining a model here inside of the schema file where we can say an ID is of type int and we'll tag it with ID and we can set various things like a default value and in this case auto increment also we can then create relations as well between data and here we can see we have a user relation and we have a field that we want to use and it's referencing a id from another model in this case it would be a user model so ton of different things that prisma can do it supports javascript typescript and a variety of different databases as i've mentioned and ultimately what you get out of it at the end is this really nice sdk and it's fully typed so when you're working with the Prisma client, you can fetch records and use the find unique function. You can then pass it some where parameters and this where email value, this would be whatever you've set inside of the model here where you specify a unique constraint. So depending on what your model looks like, that changes how this works. So here we have dot posts, in our example, we are not going to be using posts. We're going to be using carts and cart items. So we'll see that we can call dot cart or dot cart item. And then the where property and what that looks like, that's all built up from the model that we've defined inside of that uh, Prisma uh, file. Then uh, further on down, you can see here that it has some great support for Visual Studio Code. I would recommend that you go and check this out and you install this. I am running this inside of my Visual Studio Code recording this video today. So I recommend that you install this. It's hugely popular and it kind of does some really cool things for syntax highlighting, linting any errors when working with that. And one thing that I have set as well is editor format on save as true for this so whenever we are working with a prisma file it will automatically format that um, similar to uh, prettier if you've used that before which is really cool so yeah go and check this out and uh, you will want to install the visual studio code plugin and uh, if you're curious to kind of learn a little bit more there's tons of different things with prisma that we will be using and exploring throughout this tutorial uh, and the visual database browser will be one of those as well prisma studio is really cool and it's an mpx command away so what we are going to do is we are going to now install the local version of this and if you want to follow along with the quick start on prisma to get up and running with it by all means pause this video go check that out and learn how prisma works a bit more in depth but we'll assume that you're fairly familiar with prisma uh, or at least can get going with it or maybe followed this before and what we'll do is actually start from scratch here and we will be using a relational database throughout this and the database that we will be using is mysql and we set this up in a previous video where we have a local docker container running that service for our mysql database and we'll be connecting to that from our project here so go and check uh, all of this out if you want to learn a little bit more but next we're just going to kind of get going and installing this inside of our project 
So I'm in the root of my project here and I'm going to use npm install and I will install the exact version which is a dev dependency and I'm passing uh, hyphen D here that installs it as a dev dependency. Alternatively, you could do that and we are then going to install Prisma and this will install a specific version. And if we load up the package JSON once this is installed, we can see the exact version uh, that we have installed here. So let's scroll on down and have a look at the dev dependency and we're using 3.11.0. So if you're following along, you may want to install that version and you can do that by just typing at uh, 3.11.0 here when you're installing that dependency. So if you do run into any issues, maybe you can follow along using this specific version. Um, but we won't be doing anything too out of the ordinary with Prisma, so you should be able to follow along with the latest version. Um, we'll not install the client just yet. We'll come on to that when we need it. The first thing that we'll do will be to run mpx prisma init. And what will this will do is it will create a .env file in the root of our directory, and it will add the database URL. It will also set the provider, and then we'll go ahead and change that. So inside of the uh, project now, we will have a look at this Prisma folder that it's created, and we have this schema.prisma. And then inside of the schema file, we can see we have the generator provider set to Prisma client.js, and then the data source DB provider is set to Postgres. We want to actually change this to be MySQL, and then we can save this file, and this env will be picked up from the env.file, the .env file that was created in the root of our project. And then obviously we'll want to update this so this matches the database connection string to our Docker instance. Before we do that though, I want to draw your attention to the package JSON and what we'll do in here is add a new script. When we work with anything inside of Prisma and we want to generate a new client, we want to use that dependency that we've just installed. So here we'll type in generate and I'm gonna prefix this with db generate because this is going to generate uh, some various types for our clients. So instead of here, we can just type Prisma generate and it will execute that Prisma uh, dependency and run the generate command. Now, if we go back to the env file, the URL that we will want to set here is going to be our MySQL. This username and password for our localhost 3307 port and the database, that must match what we have inside of the Docker compose file. And you can see here, we have that exposed port and then we have our database name, the username and the password for that. So make sure all of that matches up if you've changed anything. You'll need to update that database URL. I'm then going to run Docker Compose up. And then if I move over to Docker, we should see that we have that running Docker container here and that application is all running. If we load this, we can see that things are booting up and things are running and exposed on that port. And what we'll do inside of it, we'll just open a new terminal here and we'll have this where we can kind of get going with the installing the rest of our project. But let's close these files out and head back to the schema.prisma file. It's inside of here that I kind of want to create uh, a few more things for my model. But before we do that, we actually want to connect our application that we have here. We I next want to install the Prisma client dependency and we can do at Prisma slash client and this will install that dependency in our package JSON. Now, if we load the package JSON and we scroll down to our dependencies, we can see here that we have the Prisma client installed. And again, this is at 3.11.0. So if you're following along, check that out. Next, I want to create a file inside the root of my project that is going to be libprisma.ts. So inside of here, we will import the Prisma client and then we can then declare some globals. Now over on the Prisma docs, we actually have a best practice when working with Next.js. In development, you can exhaust the connections to your database because we have something called hot reloading happening. So every time you save something, it kind of reboots and reconnects to the database. Obviously, that is going to slow things down and it's going to kind of break your application at some point. So there is a solution from Prisma here that we can use and this kind of make, makes things a lot easier to work with. Obviously, we only kind of want to do this when we're in development and this isn't production. So I'm gonna copy all of this from their docs and I'm gonna paste it in here. And then what now we've got access to is this const prisma that we export. 
and then we can attach this to our uh, GraphQL yoga server. So I'm going to go over to the API directory now. I'm now going to import Prisma from the lib Prisma file, and this is the client that we have. Now this isn't actually doing anything right now. We'll need to actually generate that client when we create some types. I'm now going to import a new type and we'll import Prisma client from the Prisma client package. Then further on down, I will export a new type and we'll call this GraphQL context. We'll then add Prisma as the Prisma client type that we imported above. Inside of cogen.yml, when we generate our types.ts file, we actually want to specify some additional config about this context that we've just created. So here inside of config, I can pass context type and then I can pass it the relative path to that file. The codegen.yml is in the root of the project. So if we navigate into pages slash API slash index, index being the file name, then if we do hash GraphQL context, the GraphQL code generator can read this export and use it as the context type. Now, if we open the terminal and run npm run codegen, this will generate some new types for us. If we load the types.ts file and we go to the top, we should now see that we have GraphQL context imported from our API file. If we then find any instances of this throughout our file, we can see here that we have GraphQL context used for the context type generic for our cart resolvers, the query resolvers, and the overall resolvers type itself. This won't get us very far. So what we'll now need to do is export a new async function that is called create context. This will return a promise containing that GraphQL context type. And this return object will match the GraphQL context type. Then we can take this function and scroll down to our server and where we pass context, we can now call our function create context. If we hover over create server here, we'll notice that the request and response here is called incoming message and server response. Next.js handles this a little bit differently with the overall request. What we'll now do is import the type next API request and next API response from next itself. We can then pass this to the create server generic. And this gives our server a little bit more type safety when working with the API. Now, if we scroll up and we go to cart, we can see that the resolver has the context inside of there. So if we go and sign here and destructure, we can see that we can destructure Prisma from that context argument. And this is fully typed because we use this factory function above to create that. 